Hey everyone, Kristen from Maybe a Better One and Knits here today to talk to you about the top five knitting books you want to have in your knitting book library. And this is not necessarily books for beginners or books on how to knit, but these are more books that are going to increase your knowledge about, about knitting, about knitting techniques, about stitch patterns, about garment construction, just really solid books to have in your knitting book library if you are really getting into knitting. So if you are kind of a beginner, this is not quite the video for you. This is um, really for a more experienced knitter who maybe wants to delve more into the topic, um, people who are kind of toying with the idea of maybe um, taking a step back from patterns and uh, designing things from scratch or looking for guidance on how to uh, modify existing patterns to make their knitting a little bit more custom and a little bit more personal. So these are the five books that I would recommend having in your knitting library if that sounds like you. All right, so we'll start right here on the top of the pile, The Knitter's Almanac. Um, this is sort of a quintessential knitting book and it does have patterns in it. Uh, so this is by Elizabeth Zimmerman, Queen of Knitting. Uh, and this is quite an old book. Let me check the copyright. Okay, it looks like this was originally published in 1974. So that is uh, getting, getting close to 50 years old. And you can see it's called Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac Projects for Each Month of the Year. So there are patterns in here of a sort, but they're not written the way that we write patterns today. It's more like some guidance on how to create the things in question. So probably the most famous project from this book is the February baby sweater. Um, but there are actually 12 projects in here. And I'm recommending this book just because Elizabeth Zimmerman's commentary on knitting, her knowledge of knitting, the way that she writes, um, are just something that ever, every, I feel like every devoted knitter really needs to experience. Um, so you may not use this pattern, this pattern, this book frequently, you know, you might not be consulting it constantly, but it's just, it's definitely a, a book you want to have on your shelf. You want to give it a read through at least once and, you know, go back to it occasionally, uh, for some, some guidance and some pithy directions, as she calls them, pithy directions. Um, maybe give some of the projects a try, but just, just reading her, her thoughts and um, her perspective. Um, you can read about some of the, the percentages that she uses to, to create garments and um, just, I don't know, the whole thing is just like a really amazing knitting stream of thought, but also some patterns. So definitely, and this is a really cheap one too. So this retails in the US for eight bucks. Um, you just you just have to have it, you have to have it. That's the rule. When you turn into a knitter, they just hand you one. All right, so that's number one, Knitter's Almanac, Elizabeth Zimmerman. The next four are a bit more practical. Um, we'll start with a good, Stitch Dictionary. This, which is now called 750 Knit Stitches, Knitting Stitches, used to be four different stitch guides. Um, and it was like, you know, kind of textured, lace, cables, and color work and edgings and trims. Maybe it was five different books. Uh, but it has now been shrunk down into one book. And if you are at all interested in creating your own designs, not necessarily for publishing, but just creating, you know, personal things or giving a personal touch to existing patterns. This has just every, every stitch pattern you can think of. Um, now that said, all of the stitch patterns in here are given for working flat. Um, so you do need to be a bit of a more experienced knitter if, um, 
maybe you want to be using these on projects that are worked in the round. There are a series of stitch dictionaries that are called something like up, down, all around stitch dictionaries, which tells you how to work the uh, stitch patterns in them from either direction as well as flatten in the round. Uh, but they're much, there's at least one because I own it. There might be a couple of more, but they definitely don't have 750 different stitch patterns as far as I know covered in there. So for a good, really comprehensive um, stitch dictionary, this is a great choice because it has a little bit of everything. Um, like I said, it has, you know, kind of basic textured stitch patterns that you were gonna make from knits and pearls. It has lace and cables and, and even a little bit of color work. So especially if you're, you're not looking for something that's specific to one of those, but you just want something very broad that's gonna encompass lots of different kinds, this is a really good one to have. Uh, this or retails in the US for $24.99, at least it did when it was published. Um, and I am pretty sure that I got this on Amazon. Obviously this is not sponsored since I don't have, you know, <laughs> accurate information about where it's from or the current price. Um, but I think this is something you can probably get, you know, just about anywhere. Let's see, this is published by St. Martin's Griffin. So, um, think this is widely available, at least throughout the US, and it's a good solid stitch dictionary. Um, that said, if you prefer charts, there are no charts in here, so it is all written. Now, if you are looking for a little bit of a more specific stitch dictionary and you like cables, I cannot recommend this book enough. Norgon is the queen of cables, and this is an absolutely fantastic because not only does it have patterns and not only does it have stitch patterns, but it has instructions and guidance for how to, you know, start with a basic, um, a basic two by two cable and how to expand and add on and blend into other patterns. So if you like cable knitting at all, the Knitted Cable Source book is absolutely a must have. Love it. I use this all the time for, when I am designing things, um, I cannot say enough good things about this if you are a fan of cables in your knitting. When it's, you absolutely, immediately yes, you need this one. Um, so that said, um, the instructions in it are written instructions and charts. As I said, it has, you know, it starts out with some basic things, then it starts expanding on, you know, basic cables to get to bigger things. Um, it has a section in here about reversible cables. Uh, and uh, then of course it has actual patterns for things as well. So you really cannot go wrong with this. I mean, look, look at this, this is just beautiful. So if you enjoy knitting cables, you want to maybe, um, you know, give a, a personal touch to cable knits or you want to start designing your own. This is absolutely a must, must have. So this is published by Abrams and it retails for $29.95 in the United States and it is worth every penny. All right, then the next two books are about sweater knitting. So I know that not all knitters knit sweaters but I think that's a little shame. <laughs> um, as I said, this video is more intended for intermediate knitters that are really getting committed to and invested in knitting and want um, to tackle bigger and better projects. So if you're not a sweater knitter, apologies. I really think, you know, everybody should give it a try though. So I'm gonna start with the more basic one. Um, this one is, you'll hear a lot of people recommending this one. So the Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. Um, so there are a lot of different sweater styles and I'm gonna do um, a video in the relatively near future about uh, the five basic styles um, and what they are, which is a uh, circular yoke, um, set and sleeve, raglan, drop shoulder, saddle shoulder. 
and pretty much all of them can be knit from the top down. That's not how all patterns are written and some styles are much easier to knit from the bottom up than from the top down, but top down sweater knitting, um, it's much easier in terms of fit. It's a lot easier to check the fit of your sweater when you're knitting from the top down. So if you are at all interested in knitting sweaters, this is a great book to have. So um, she does have some, again, there are some patterns in here, but it's really helpful just for learning how sweaters are constructed, all of these different styles. And then she just gives you tables and tables of, of stitch counts based on what your gauge is and what size you're trying to get. And that's not to say that these are, you know, 100%. Um, because when you are starting to incorporate stitch patterns and things into your sweaters, you make adjustments. This gives you a really good jumping off point if you're interested in trying to create your own sweater from scratch. It also can help you to modify existing patterns by helping you understand um, how the construction works, how the gauge and sizing works and stitch counts work. And again, it also does have um, the patterns in it as well if you are just looking for some patterns. I've never knit any of the patterns out of here, um, but I use this all the time when designing sweaters just as sort of uh, a good jumping off point. If I, um, you know, I, I'm starting from saying, hey, I, I want to do a raglan. Let me get some, some basic numbers to just to get started with. Then this is really helpful for that. So this, um, covers four of the sweater styles that I just mentioned. So uh, the circular yoke, the raglan, the set in sleeve, and the saddle shoulder. It doesn't have any drop shoulders, but that is basically because a drop shoulder sweater is two squares sewn together at the shoulders. Um, and drop shoulders are usually worked from the bottom up. You can do it the other way, but um, it's, it's much simpler to do from the bottom up and that's why people like them because they're very simple and straightforward. Um, I personally have never knit a set and sleeve sweater from the top down, um, but certainly you can do it. Um, and this is just a, a great resource for sweater knitting. Um, so if sweater knitting interests you at all, absolutely you wanna grab this one. One of the other great things about it I said it's spiral bound, so it lays flat. And that's really helpful when you are trying to work from, from something in the book. You don't have to try to hold it open. All right, so Anne Bud, Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. This is published by Interweave. When I purchased it, it was uh, $29.95. I don't know if that is still the correct price, um, but absolutely. If you like sweaters, this is a good one. And now my last one. If you are at all interested in designing your own sweaters, or if you really love set in sleeve sweaters, but hate sewing in the sleeves, and if you don't hate it, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you're very unusual. Um, you definitely wanna get your hands on this. So it's called Top Down, Reimagining Set in Sleeves. Uh, it is by Elizabeth Doherty, which is, um, or who is uh, Blue Bee Studio or Blue Bee Design, Blue Bee Studio. Uh, so she is a pattern designer. And this book is going to explain to you how to knit seamless set-in sleeves. So that is, rather than sewing the sleeve, knitting the sleeves flat sewing them into the armhole, you will instead pick up stitches around the armhole and move the sleeves in and around the The reason this is a bit complicated is because you need, you, you can't just, like for a drop shoulder, a drop shoulder sweater is kind of like this if it had sleeves. 
So it naturally has a shoulder that is dropping down your arm. So instead of the shoulder, the sleep arm hole point being here, it's way down here. It's over your shoulder. So you can just pick up in the round and knit down because your shoulder's already covered. Set in sleeves are not that way. Set in sleeves have a armhole right about here. And in order to pick up and knit sleeves seamlessly, you have to sleep shape this sleeve cap here, which means you have to create some fabric to cover this part of the shoulder so that when you get to the underarm, you have even stitches that are going kind of right around the arm, arm, underarm bicep area you have, and then you can knit straight down or tapered, but you know what I mean? You can't, you can just knit in a circle, but you have to cover this part of your shoulder first. So uh, in order to do that, you are going to use short rows. Um, and they're actually a bit easier than your kind of average short rows because you don't have to pick up any wraps. Um, but you do have to figure out, you have to learn, and that's what she explains in here, how to space those short rows so that you are covering the shoulder appropriately and then reaching that point where, that you, where you can knit down. So you are kind of using shorter, faster short rows here, then it slows down a little bit, then you pick up all the way around the bottom. Um, it is a whole system that she has worked out the math for and explains it in beautiful detail in this book, which again, also has patterns. I have never knit any, any of the patterns from here, but there's definitely a couple that I wanted to knit when I bought it. I just, you know, I knit, <laughs> I designed my own pattern, so I've just never had time. Now, all of the patterns in here are worked from the top down. You can see it's called top down. Um, but you don't have to. You could, as a traditional set and sleeve, you're usually going to start at the bottom and work up to the shoulder just because it's a lot easier to kind of start in one piece or, you know, one flat piece or one round piece, work up to the armholes, then split and decrease than it is to start with the small piece and, and expand outward. But the sleeve part is the same. You're always going to be working the sleeves from the top down. Um, so you can actually knit the sweater body itself in either direction. So uh, a few years ago, I published a set and sleeve saddle shoulder called Diego. It is, I believe, my most popular pattern to date. And I used this book to design the seamless set and sleeves on that. And I, I love it. It works so well. It's so carefully explained. And then it's really helpful that it explains sort of the the math and the logic and the reasoning behind it because then it also makes it easier for you to make adjustments yourself once you understand sort of the foundation. So again, if you want to, if you're interested in designing sweaters or if you are interested in taking existing patterns and instead of sewing in the sleeves, knitting them from the top down seamlessly, you want this book. So this retails for $24 in the United States. At least it did when it was published. I do not know. I think, oh, it was published by Elizabeth Doherty and Quince and Company. So, but you, you don't have to get it from Quince and Company. I definitely bought this at, on like Amazon or maybe Knitpicks or something. So it is widely available. Definitely get this book. All right. So there you have it. Those are my top five knitting books to have in your knitting book library. If you are a dedicated knitter and ready to expand your horizons and learn more, you definitely want to pick up these books. Thanks so much for joining me for this week's video, and I will see you next time. I thought we'd just finish up with a peek at the other books on my knitting shelf, although clearly this is not a knitting book. This is from my life as a translator, but the rest. If you like brioche, this is good. There's that up, down, all around stitch dictionary. This, if you're looking for 
kind of interesting new stitches, stitch patterns. This I really, I got for Christmas and haven't really even had a chance to look at yet. This is amazing if you are interested in um, knitting traditions in the Andes. This is because I hope to someday um, have a dye garden <laughs> and use natural dyes. Um, so this is great if you are interested in, in fiber and spinning. If you like color work, this is a good one. This is another good one if you're interested in sweaters. Um, this is not knitting. <laughs> this is the issue of Nomadic Knits with my poncho pattern, swancho pattern in it. Um, and here's, let's see, Pom Pom Magazine. And then these are all my other magazines, back issues, mostly interweave. And then a few more Spanish dictionaries. 